Welcome back to the channel and a new video. Straight back on the Tago. Tygo, Tiago, whatever you'd like to call it. The Volkswagen. The Volkswagen, yeah. I certainly got it wrong quite a few times and uh, people trying to explain by just spelling it right. I did start looking for bits for this and I weren't, you know, I weren't never really going to say it, but Chris said, you had any luck finding any bits? And I actually come in that morning and said to you, I can't find one part. No. And did I, what did I have around the wrong way? That's a just and the I. The A yeah. and the I. Spelling. So I was typing in a completely different car. <laughs> and then Chris gave me the correct spelling that was written on the back of the car and we started finding some bits. So you set this up as a bit of a demo, mate. I'll just let you take over. Yes, basically. I mean, picking up from the previous video, Rob, today really is going to be quite repetitive because what I did in the last video, I've now got to do on the other chassis leg. But just to clear a few things up, because there was a few comments, weren't there, regarding the measuring. This has mocked this up. I've cut this chassis off the front end as well. It's not unpicked, not cleaned up yet, but bolted it into the subframe to kind of show what will be happening on the car and how I'm going to replicate those measurements I've took from the undamaged front end onto this repaired front end. So hopefully that kind of explains yeah, definitely. Subframe's going back on the car because it, it bolts to these chassis legs, but it also bolts to the underside of the car. So for alignment purposes, it's perfect, isn't it? That's an undamaged uh, subframe as well. So we bolt that back on. We bolt the unpicked chassis legs to that front panel on, and then we use those diagonal measurements to make sure they are in the right place. 100% square. So, so 100% gonna, square, that's right, correct. Going to be a little bit repetitive. Because Very repetitive, unfortunately, we, with regard the unpicking, the cleaning the seam sealer, the unpicking. Um, so probably won't show as much as that, I'm guessing. You're just going to crack on. Yeah, um, we, get to the, we get to the welding in bit, I guess, and then we pick up from there, maybe. All right, mate, we'll let you crack on. So with the driver's side leg out, you can see Chris is just moving everything out of the way to get to that passenger leg. He needs to get to all those welds, grind up all of that seam sealer, and you've got the ABS pump that side. Your actual main wiring loom, fuse box, everything all seems to run down that passenger side. But he's getting that all cleared out of the way, ready so he can get in now, get that bent chassis leg chopped out, and get the new one spliced in. just pop down to Reclamet while Chris is doing that to get a couple of batteries for the boat. He's got loads and loads of these batteries in stock, all different sizes. And we're gonna go for two of these beauties. And he's got loads for sale. I'll put a link for, have you got these listed for sale? I'll put a link for these batteries that he's got listed for sale, but two of these for the old boat, that'll do us. Let's get back to the yard, see how Chris is getting on straight into a bit of welding on that driver's side chassis leg. I think at this point, Chris had already done the passenger one and we're not actually gonna film doing both sides. Like we've done it before, we've done it plenty of times and it does become quite monotonous. So welding that new leg in there on all of the factory spot welds as well and any seams that it had, they're all going back on. Cleaning it up there with a bit of a grinder, cleaning the welds up and I think we're done. So Chris said, is gonna save everyone the pain. We changed the chassis legs on the Audi A1, we changed them on the Mercedes GLA, and I can't quite think what the other vehicle was. So it was just that one piece of time lapse. He said, otherwise it just becomes monotonous, the same thing over and over again. So new chassis leg in there, primed, seam sealed up, ready for some paint. Chassis leg in, all seam sealed up, in primer, ready for some paint. And I think you'd agree. Once that's got some colour on it, you're never ever going to know that they've ever been damaged because they're both replaced. They're new ones in there. They've gone back on the factory joints, on the factory welds. And you're just not going to be able to tell, are you? So I guess he's going to flat this off, knock up some paint, and let's get it in colour and start the process of piecing this one back together. So all primed up, time to move on to that sealer. So it's a bit of brush on sealer first in the places that was previously brushed on on it to get it exactly, get it matching. And then we'll move on after, well, Chris will, 
to a bit of spray on sealer. This is the OE um, seam sealer that the factory uses. We buy it from Worth, it's fantastic stuff. Chris has had the gun years, and it, as you can see there, it comes out and you'd never tell that that's been replaced. So I already explained it there in the time lapse, but it is just tacking off now before Chris does it, it with that paint. And I think you'd agree, it's exactly as it looked that before you even started. OEM PU spray sealer Tex Rock. with a texture finish. Goes through, we've shown it before, haven't we, with the it, applicator for, gun. Yeah. And you can uh, you can replicate all kinds of patterns and textures with it. So I think we've got one, is that called a stalagmite? Yes, <laughs> yes, there's a little bit. Better to have too much than not enough. Exactly, That's what mate. I think. So, and I have um, sniffed in some grey on all those white bits of sealer um, because then when I come to put the base coat on it, it's all a uniform underneath yeah. it. You haven't got different Right, Chris, just quickly, yes, sorry. We're back to normal now. We are. But we just want to stick this little bit in. We don't, obviously, no one makes an habit of saying they're going on holiday. How was Brighton? Oh, fabulous, yeah. First time for the London to Brighton veteran run. You enjoyed loved it. it. Loved it, yeah. In the market for a veteran car now. So if anyone's got a project pre-1904. <laughs> You're interested. Yes, definitely. So Chris actually, he went away and then went down to Brighton. And I went to a place called, I don't want to get it right, Bangland Resort, Bangland Resort down in Lancashire. And that was a bit of, in the boat video, everyone's like, well, where is Chris then? In, in the yeah, comment section. Yeah. Of course, you was well chuffed when you got back and saw that, the, yeah, the legs good. all on yeah. there, that's all done. And also, the BMW process, you wasn't around for that. So you've been away, I've been away. It's been absolutely lovely. So it has been, we're back to normal now. Till Christmas. But till Christmas. Yeah. But this video has been a bit bit filmed here, bit filmed there, it but has. we are <clears> on <throat> it now. So yeah. Chris is going to let that tack off and then get some base coat on there. I am going to go an MOTR recovery truck because everyone mentioned in a BMW video that we only have one day left. Really? Yeah, so right. let's go and get that done, mate, and we'll let you crack on and get okay, some yeah, paint I'll, on Okay, yeah, I will time-lapse a bit of base coat going on. Yeah? And, um, yeah. All right, it. good All right. stuff. Can't wait to get the engine back in this one. Yeah, it'll be very soon. It will be very soon. Let's do it. Lots and lots of new goodies for the engine. Been ordering up in the background there. So fingers crossed, we should be able to put this back in with all of the new ancillaries on it. And, and hopefully it fires up. I don't know about that though, just firing straight up. We see the state of it previously, didn't we? And still quite a few bits to remove off there and a couple of new bolts to get for it as well. I think we're gonna put that engine box back in where the car sits now, aren't we? I think so. So we probably want to get the engine lift in first. Get it in first and then... So we don't block it with this. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, I'll get all that done and then... Because uh, you've got to crack on and get your painting done, haven't you? So on to a bit of paint. This is exciting now because the major repairs on this car are done. When the paint goes on, you know the repairs are have come to an end. So a bit of paint on there, and then he'll go round after with a torch, just checking that if there's any little patches that he's missed or need a bit more paint on them. Painting over all that sealer as well, that's wet on wet the sealer. So you spray the sealer on, let it tack off, and then you go straight over the top of it with some paint. And I think he's pretty much there with it, and the job is a good one. Thank you everyone that reminded me that the MOT was running out on the truck. I rung around and could not get it in anywhere Friday or Monday. And of course, I remember this place. We come here before, didn't we? Only pay when you pass, which is brilliant. I rung them up, said, can you get it in? I was like, yeah, no problem, Rob, drop it over. But I just noticed this when I walked past the window. Let's see if I can pick it up. It tells you how long you've got left on your MOT. I didn't want to show that too much because there's a lady sitting in the reception there and I didn't want to catch her on camera. 
So yeah, fitted me straight in and we are straight in as well. I turned up 15 minutes early and they was ready for me. So we'll see how we get on. We look after that truck. We hardly do any miles in it. So I'm sure it's gonna be absolutely fine. And of course, I will put a link for these in the description down below. I know they're all over the Southeast now. They've opened this same company, the test center, nothing but MOTs. Let's see how we get on. Well, Chris cracked that while I was out and that car is ready now. All we gotta do is let it dry. Probably gonna want a good 24 hours to go rock hard that before we start building it up. But where we got the engine in earlier, just started stripping a few bits off. And that's what's left of the old alternator. And you can see the bolts are quite bent as well. There's the nice new alternator and oil cooler. Yeah. We've got, should be. Yeah, I think we've got one. Yeah. And do you know what, Chris, this was, 12 quid yes right result. that was a right result wasn't it and also this has snapped out of this cooler and we've got a nice new one of them as well so i think what we'll do is just start removing all these broken parts yeah. and replacing them for the for the good parts but all looks quite nice and easy straightforward to do let's get on with it so me working on the engine here, there's loads and loads of components to change on this engine that got damaged on the front. Nothing was hard here, it all just got caught and broke corners off of things. So the alternator, um, the AC compressor, that uh, charge cooler there, all of it had little bits of damage on it. So I'm getting them swapped out and Chris is currently working under the bonnet of the car fitting all that stuff back on, ABS pump, wiring loom, etc., that he previously removed before he fitted that leg. But I've fitted all the parts we've got. We're just waiting on a few more little bits for this one and we can get them fitted. Now, although this is the exciting part, getting that engine back in, still lots and lots of work to do. So I'll, you see what I was doing there, I explained in the time-lapse, but I've found some other little broken pipes and clips that I need to get on the case of. And Chris said he didn't want a time-lapse anymore over here. Just leave him a crack on. And I think you've nailed it, mate. All the yeah, wiring's back in. Yep, yep. We're kind of a couple of bits to plug in yet. Um, but I think once the engine goes in, Rob, it'll all, uh, it'll all come together. they got to go around now. they got to plug in. Engine loom's got to plug into the ECU. Um, clutch, gear change, cat. Yeah. All pretty straightforward, I think. ABS all went in there okay? Uh, ABS back in, all bolted up pipes, because you're going to struggle to get to them afterwards, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I think so. Bit One. of damage on the bit of damage on the wire in here when we, uh, when we get to it. Yeah, a couple of plugs. So, but we yeah. Get, we get that sorted. Mate, one thing people do always mention, I know you've got it out, it's on the pillar drill there, I think, isn't yep. it? Oh, yep. Everyone always says, because we just don't include it, we just take it for granted because yeah. it's what we always do. Want to blast Please. it now? Yeah, do it, and then I can actually show it. Ready? Yeah. So that's the dinner troll going in, and we will literally use plenty of it overkill, really. We always have. You can see and then that you'll coming see, out there. You'll see it start pouring out the chassis, and then Chris will move on and just yeah. fill these little holes everywhere. And this one... one yeah, you can see it coming out under there. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, is it? You yeah, see, yeah, you can see, see that lovely. From so, the light, you'll yeah. probably see the fumes. So that is all the dinner troll, all going inside them chassis legs. And we leave that right till the last minute, of course, because you don't want to be painting over the top of anything like that. But we'll always fill up all the chassis legs or any damage we've done. And even though you can see it going out here, Chris will go round and fill up any visible holes as well just to make sure that that is completely sealed up in there and it ain't ever gonna rust. So I guess we got the rack in, mate, that's bolted in. What, what's next, engine bed? Yeah, I think, I think subframe. we put the subframe in and um, yeah, get, we can get that, that rack buttoned up then, can't we? And then get the engine lined up, mate. Yeah. Getting yeah. exciting now. That's it, mate. Very, very nice. All them, everyone in the first video said, God, oh, that is a lot of work. And it is, has been a lot of work, but mm. I think you'd agree. This has been a bloody quick turnaround, really, hasn't it? Uh, I don't know, it is a no, lot of work. No, it's been a long time. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, video-wise, this yeah. is only the third video on it. And already... Yeah, we're, yeah but we have kind of skipped half the job, really. We've not shown, have we? Putting all the chassis legs in, Well, because yeah. that's 
repetitive. I showed a little sample pre earlier in this video. Yeah. Earlier in this video of welding and grinding, but there was a lot more of that that we've not bothered. Yeah, as I say, definitely. It's, it's very repetitive. Yeah, so, you're right. So, um, and get, a lot of unpicking. A so. lot of unpicking. Mm. Let's get that subframe in there. So, exciting now. Engine bed on. There is only four bolts that hold this on, and then you've got the two underneath for your steering rack, in with the engine. Again, you've got two bolts one side, two bolts the other side. Chris got his lined up, got those in. We lifted it up a little bit, in it went. Gearbox mount on it underneath as well, and that is the engine back in the car. Nice and productive there, you would have seen in that bit of time lapse. So much happened there. And this is all we got left bolt-wise, but you can see that's the battery tray. You got a couple of clips, but really, really are getting through those now. So we did cut the time lapse short and did crack on with a lot, lot more. So I was over this side, very, very tight round there, getting that cap back in there, getting all the bolts back in, and then there's a bracket at the top. And I mean, again, it was all very, very tight and difficult to get to. And Chris worked slightly higher than me, so I had to use a op up, but managed to get that on there, got that all bolted on and Chris worked over here, got that gear selector, all the gear change cables back on, got all the wiring rooted pretty much where we think it needs to be. Now we have managed to buy a complete front panel, crash bar, rad pack, all complete. And the chap said that he's gonna send it out complete from a specialist breakers. So once that arrives, we'll get a better idea of the location of all the wires. But Chris has got the ECU all plugged in there. He really did all the ABS unit, it's Lambers, everything is all plugged back in there. And very, very nice where it's so new, there's no grease and anything like that all over it. And none of the clips were broken at the back there. It is just a bit of wiring damage at the front. The new drive shaft that actually turned up yesterday. So we managed to get that. Chris has just got the bolt undone out of that. I think we're probably just gonna move on and actually get all of the other bits that are sitting around that we've got here that can go back on now before the front panel we're put like things like that leg i think we'll just chuck them on mate we might as well because it's a good way of spotting any things you've missed that might be damaged or yeah definitely. If you think as you're taking it apart you're making a note of it don't you but then sometimes when you're putting the car back together you notice other things so yeah, little bits it, rather than stopping now and waiting for them other bits we might as well crack on and get as much as we can on yeah and then it highlights any bits we've overlooked let's it? get let's get them pair of legs on it then mate both suspension legs in driver side first of course working as a team i'll lift it up hold it in there chris gets the bolts in and then i'll move on to the drive shaft lower arm and then go around to the other side and of course both of us together again i'll lift it up in there chris gets the bolts in because he's taller than me and I can't reach him. Lower arm in there, drive shaft in, and I think we are coming to an end with this one. I always get a little bit giddy and excited when a car gets to this stage because it ain't gonna be that long and we're gonna be taking this one off the frame machine. The leg is all back on there, new drive shafts in. This drop link is actually the wrong one so i need to order one up we've got one original one but if you remember the one from this side was actually quite badly damaged but all the brake line connected all that back up got to pull down in a minute the abs sensor and put that in and of course we got that track rod end to remove all the interior is back together carpets all back down trims back on and again, the same in the driver's side. I'm not even sure if we showed that, but we had to pull all the carpet up and the underlay because Chris was welding in those legs. We didn't want to end up obviously catching on fire. Actually, what do you call it, Rob? You're on fire duty. Yeah. And I'm sitting, sitting yeah, in the squirty can. It's down now, just yeah. put it out of the car. So that's it there. We have that full up with water and it just prevents obviously any fires or any spreading. Uh, driver's side, little bit more work to do here because the caliper had been removed and of course that one was, we pulled that all off as one lump. Yeah. But drive shafts all back in there, that's all bolted up. They are quite tricky to do because you've got your six or eight, eight bolts all the way around the outside there but Chris has done them up, talked them, brake calipers on and I think 
I think, rather, I keep saying that. I think after you've done that, Chris, this can have the wheels put back on it. Uh, bleed with oh, bleed. Oh yeah, we've got to bleed the brakes and, and the clutch. clutch. Yeah, so once that's together, we do that. Good e news easy on the alley bleed, wheel. So that's easy, isn't it? Oh yes, yes, we've got a new one as well, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. Good news on the alley wheel. Yeah. So the alley wheel, we weren't too sure about because it was quite, it had a, like a chunk out of it and the tyre had a hole in the side of it. But I think the tyre took the brunt of it because we took it to JW Smarts, they put it on their machine and it run absolutely true. We had it refurbed and I've dropped it off to A2 tyres, but the tyre was special order. We want, of course, this car's done less than a thousand miles. So we want exactly the same tyres and we're not gonna need to buy a pair because it's done less than a thousand. So 215 18s, they're Hankooks, con control anyway it's volkswagen specific apparently i'm sure they're on other models but and it turned out it was on back order but it is coming in in the next couple of days so we'll have that tire we'll put that on and get this one off the absolutely jig absolutely blown away i personally am blown away in this video drop it in the comment section because when i walked in here two days ago and the chassis legs weren't even in that car chris had cut them out i was speechless thinking where do we go from here? Because you can't do anything until they're back in. But of course, Chris nailed it. He's got them well, well be back in there, sealed up, painted, and we've managed to fit that engine and gearbox. He's now just messing around with the last few little bits, brake pipes, brake lines, getting that tied up in the background. Why he was doing that also, I've just been online and got really lucky. On eBay, there's a guy breaking one of these that's hit hard in the passenger side. And I've rung him up and said, have you got a driver's seat? He said, I wouldn't normally sell a seat separately, but my passenger one's actually gone off. So I've managed to get off of him a driver's side R-line seat and a curtain airbag, and he's gonna post them out today. So I really do think, apart from a front bumper, we got everything for this. Um, yeah, we bought a new, new bonnet. We bought a brand new bonnet. Um, we've now got the front panel and rads on their way. Have we yeah. got headlights yet? We've got headlights, yeah. Um, I've got one of them, the other one will be here this week. So we're pretty much there with it. As usual, we do hope that you did enjoy this video. I did something today, look. No getting away with that. We do hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget, share it on all your social networking sites. It really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram at Selvage Rebuilds and Chris on his personal one at Selvage Rebuilds Chris. Just quickly before we go, I do know that Instagram have stopped people private messaging us. I don't know what that's all about. It's across the board for everyone. So you get one, one bite of the cherry. You get to send us one message and then that's it. You don't get them anymore. So we've opened up a little email address and it's sales, S-I-U-K, at gmail.com. I'll put it up on the screen as I'm saying it. And of course, if you've got a car for sale or you want to buy one of our cars, once they do come up for sale, you can reach out to us on there. And of course, I'll get back to you. But always include your telephone number. Have a great rest of the week, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you in Sunday's video.